As people are shooting film today, the process of scanning a negative into a digital positive has become an integral part of that workflow. For sending it to friends, for sharing to social media, it has become the preferred way to enjoy the images taken with your roll of film. Photo labs often utilize professional lab scanners like Noritsu's or Fuji Frontiers. On an individual scale, we see things like flatbed scanners, low quality scanning units like the Scanza, low quality scanning apps for your smartphone, and camera scanning with high-end DSLRs. For the past few months, I've had the opportunity to explore a camera scanning unit that's tailored more towards archival and collection work. This is the Slide Snap Strip a unit that combines automation with camera scanning so that large volumes of work can be digitized very easily. The slide snap takes a digital camera equipped with a macro lens that's mounted on a small rail that can be adjusted easily depending on the size of the frame being captured. The unit has a large, very bright LED panel inside the metal housing and adjustable guides for handling 35 millimeter, 120 up to six by seven frame sizes, APS, 110, 126 and 127 sized film. The base and top guide move up or down to the appropriate size with reference numbers on the side of the unit. There are ports on the little computer board that allow you to power the camera through the unit itself if you don't want to use a battery. The film is inserted and automatically pulled into position very smoothly through a series of belts and motors. A sprocketless advanced system like this is super important, especially if you're working with older collections where the film sprockets could be damaged. The advance and adjustment is also controlled by a Wii nunchuck controller. Seriously. A little nudge of the stick to the left or the right allows for a small adjustment of the film and pushing up or down on the controller will advance the film by an entire frame. This works pretty well, but I find it still needs a little adjustment after a big advance like that, just to keep things lined up properly. This is also often due to cameras having inconsistent frame spacing on their advance though. The trigger buttons on the controller allow for you to enter the digital menu of the unit for selecting different frame options so that the advance is correct. Here you can set the film size that's being captured by cycling through the different choices, and there's also some other options for speed and adjusting the center position of advance. The controller also plugs into the remote port on a digital camera, and once you have the film in the unit, all you have to do is focus, adjust it to center, and then press the bottom button to capture. This unit was supplied to me by Sim, who makes these himself, and he also supplied a Nikon D5600 with a macro lens. The unit can be used with any number of different camera and macro lens combinations, though, because of how easy it is to get up and running with it. There is very little adjustments that need to be made. The slide snap strip is priced around 3,800 USD with the camera and lens not included. So it's important to be thinking about who the target audience of this unit is for smaller or medium-sized collections and archives that might be working to digitize a number of formats without having to take a lot of time to do it. My friend Alex and I sat down to use the slide snap with several rolls of 120 and 35 millimeter that have been cut into strips to see how it handles. Alex and I sat down with the slide snap for a few hours to scan some 120 and 35 millimeter film that had already been cut into strips. The Nikon camera was tethered to the program Capture One on my laptop for organizing all the images as we scanned with the intent to edit them later in Adobe Lightroom using Negative Lab Pro. I just found that I like tethering with Capture One more than I like tethering with Adobe Lightroom. It's very fast when you're actually capturing and easy enough to organize a large amount of images through tethering to a computer. This also allows you to monitor everything to make sure everything is in focus and that you're happy with the framing of things. So what's your closest comparison point for scanner like if we talk price-wise, the Fuji SP3000, the multi-format, does 120 okay. with a mask, and the color correction is done at the same time as capture. So this won't compete in comparison. It's it's apples and oranges. Yeah. But do you this think is to replace flatbeds? Very different workflows. Yes. I would say this is going to be for like the smaller archives and like uh, like professional photographer collections yeah, that need yeah. digitization. Makes like a sense. machine like this would really revolutionize like a lot of archives. There's like so many right now that are using like flatbeds and they're like, we don't need to improve because flatbeds are perfect.
120 strips worked well overall, but on a few we found that they shifted in the holder and had a little bit of a curl happening, which required rescanning and just a little bit of adjustment. It isn't something that happened consistently, but was something that we had to keep an eye out for because 120 is so wide in comparison to 35, which is easier to hold in these guides. The most time consuming portion of capturing all these images was just removing the film strips from their protective sleeves. This whole process moves much faster if you have uncut rolls of film that you can feed through to scan all the images at once. The unit has these little attachments for holding whole rolls like this that work really well. You just have to roll them up to fit them in properly and then they feed through really easily. Overall for working with strips, we scanned about 24 rolls of 120 film in roughly an hour and 10 rolls of 35 millimeter in about 30 minutes. Working with entire rolls would move even faster so that you can get through the scanning and move on to the editing portion. But in working with all these strips, we were pretty happy with how we were able to get through everything. I've really enjoyed having a chance to look at a unit like this and explore camera scanning on a level that's quite different from just the individual. This isn't for people who are looking at Valoi or negative lab supply holders. The automation and sort of all-in-one aspect of this makes it perfect for much larger operations. Let's think about a collection that has several thousand images on different negatives. There are lots of smaller collections out there like this who struggle to properly care for or store their elements. And a lot of places like these tend to rely on things like Epson flatbed scanners, which are slow and involve a lot of prepping and handling and cleaning of the actual film. Flatbed scanners aren't great once you have to rely on them for large volumes of work, and it doesn't feel like flatbed scanning has drastically improved in terms of quality and technology in the last few years. But digital cameras definitely have. The slide snap's biggest appeal is how easy it is to set up and use. Someone could be trained on the actual unit very quickly, and over time, the camera being used can just be upgraded for continuously better quality. The speed of capture means that there's less involved with handling the actual negatives, which means less chance that something might get damaged. Whereas with flatbed scanners, you're using like fiddly film holders and things that just require more handling. The slide snap itself is a very nicely made unit, and I love how it functions, but the side of camera scanning that's a little more awkward to look at is the post-editing workflow. Once you've captured all your negative images, the journey to crop, clean up, and invert them begins, and there's a lot of different ways to go about this. For the most part, you can capture with the slide snap pretty easily, which means you can also automate cropping to a certain extent. Even in Lightroom, I can copy a crop across multiple frames to get me to a good starting point for further editing. Flatbed scanners do have the ability to use infrared scanning on color film to remove dust, so with camera scanning, you do sack sacrifice that. The slide snap could use an anti-static brush attachment, and Sim was very receptive to that suggestion when we were talking about it, so it's definitely not out of the question or very hard to implement at all. And then there's color inversion, and this is what kind of puts me off of camera scanning a lot at times because of how inconsistent different techniques can be. We all know about Negative Lab Pro, and Negative Lab Pro is a good plugin for Lightroom, but I've also found it can be pretty frustrating and inconsistent at times, and maybe wish that it was just a standalone program instead of being built into Lightroom, because that might just allow for some more flexibility. There's also Analog Toolbox for Capture One, which is free and has some promises as well. It does just seem to have less control against Negative Lab Pro though. And of course you can just try and do manual inversions in Lightroom and Photoshop as well, but if you're trying to work with a larger volume of photos, then you're going to probably want an easier method. Nothing's gonna give you a great looking color right out of the box, and I don't expect it to. And any of these options have the ability to give you good looking results that you'll be happy with in the end. It just depends on how much adjustments you have to make to get there. But it is largely impacted by having a method that gives you a really good starting point so that you can go further with your final images. These samples are done really quickly just so you can have a kind of a basic idea of what I'm talking about for these different methods. I was really spoiled for a few years using lab scanners and just how well something like a Nuritsu HS1800 is able to handle color and do little manual corrections as you're going through large amounts of film. 
Alex and I really only focused on scanning color negative with the unit, but a lot of smaller archives and collections like I've been talking about might be really focused on scanning black and white negative, in which case the whole process becomes even easier and inverting color isn't even something that you have to worry about, making this kind of scanning that much easier to incorporate into a workflow. There's a lot of different options for how to go about editing when you're digitizing like this, but the slide snap scanner unit isn't claiming to handle that side of things, so I don't really want to get too caught up in talking about it all in this video. For a small or medium collection that's doing this sort of work, it's very easy to set somebody up on the slide snap unit and do all of that initial capturing. And then the editing work can be offloaded and spread around as long as at least a few people know what they're doing in order to set up a basic workflow for everything. The slide snap strip is also just kind of cool. The way that it's set up, the transport system, how easily you can just kind of pull a whole roll through and capture it pretty effortlessly. I scanned my roll of 110 that I featured in a video last month entirely on that thing and it gave me way better results than I was gonna get with just putting it on like my Epson V700 scanner. Sim also offers a slide snap that is designed specifically for taking mounted slides. So digitizing an entire collection that have those would be great with a unit like that. It's designed based on the Kodak carousel and will take carousel trays on top of the unit. So the advance and the way that the slides go in and out of the unit are very similar to just how a projector works. So the post workflow for camera scanning could be heavily improved. And in the next few years, I think we're gonna see a lot of progress on that front. But right now, the slide snap strip does pretty much everything that I could imagine people would want it to. Thank you so much for checking this out. There's information down in the description below for all the slide snap stuff, as well as opportunities to support the channel through Patreon and through merch if you're interested at all. And thank you so much to Sim for allowing me to play around with this unit that normally would probably have not come into my hands. So it was a lot of fun. It was very cool to look at something of this scale. And as always, I'll see you all soon. Thank you to Alexander Sabin, Anthony Tantillo, Babic Montemetti, Benjamin MacArthur, Brian DeMartin, Carly Baker, Carson Fuller, Chalian Chris, Sally Lloyd Alchemist, Charlie Acola, Chaz Allen, Chris Bautiera, Colin Jackson, Civilis, Dan Silvestri, David Kelsey, Derek Konigsberg, Django Scarupa, Elizabeth Vaselli, Georgia Nass, Juliana LaPedalina, Ian Farber, Ian Frank, Jack, Jeff Yoakum, Jeremy Lee Camp, Jordan Wysong, Larry O, Mark Lentz, Matt Kieron, Olivia Orlando Perez, Paul Snow, Scott Vansel, Sparkle Ops, Steve Miller, Taylor Brown, Thomas Wibley, and Tony Graham. And an extra special thank you to Batmik Motomedi, Carson Fuller, Larry O, Taylor Brown, and Tony Graham for going above and beyond over on the Patreon.